I'm getting ready to quit benzos, in particular clonopin, and wanted to share my experience with it, how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, all of the things I've noticed, the, the side effects and reasons why, and then kind of document my journey through it. So my name is Grady. I run a channel here where I do different things. I talk about God, Jesus. I talk about, I've talked about issues with Kratom I've had, different things just in personal life that have gone on. And at this point right now, I want to talk about clonopin, which is something I have used for, I believe, like 15 years at this point. It's been um, something I got on without understanding what that meant to me in my life. I at the time I was I was a writer I had a job you know working from home it was a dream life I was married with kids and my biggest problem was social phobia I had a big problem going out and going like to eat dinner just going out to meals and stuff and my wife at the time my ex-wife now always always wished I would go out to restaurants more I didn't you know I I wasn't a person that would just hide away from the world entirely but but going out to eat for some reason had more of a problem for me so she recommended I see somebody and I did and they diagnosed me with social phobia social anxiety which I I would have to agree with but also prescribed me clonopin at that point along with Zoloft and you know after a few years I realized there was a trade-off I it didn't even really take a few years, but I eventually did get off the Zoloft, but the Kratom was something I always had a problem with. And, you know, pretty much immediately after starting that Clonopin, I felt amazing. I felt better. <laughs> I was able to go out to those meals to dinner. I was able to do social activities I never thought I'd be able to do. And it really seemed just like this godsend at first, like it was going to be something amazing. But I also started to notice some side effects and I started to notice that I would, being a writer, like my brain, my mind is, was my moneymaker and I wouldn't be able to focus very well. I noticed I was having trouble getting motivated, feeling groggy throughout the day and just really wouldn't get going. And it, and it seemed I would take my clonopin at night at, um, you know, before bed, I would take it and I would take two milligrams before bed. So it would help me sleep, but in the morning, the day would like drag on. And then like, I could feel it almost kicking off to where in the evening I would have more energy, but just for a few hours before taking it again, it clouded my judgment so bad that eventually I told the psychiatrist I was seeing at the time, how much I was having problems with clarity and thinking, and my work was definitely suffering from it. So Instead of looking at that, they prescribed me Adderall. I believe Ritalin first and then Adderall. So I've heard the word polymorph thrown around a lot, which is the use of clonopin or benzo with another drug and that it can make it harder to come off with. I was on plenty. I was on the Zoloft. I was on an antipsychotic because the Zoloft kicked off a bipolar episode that was attributed to the Zoloft. Yet at the time they didn't know, so they thought I was bipolar. So there's an antipsychotic, there was a mood stabilizer, and then like I mentioned, the Adderall was on top of that. So all kinds of things going on in my mind, and sure the Adderall helped me write and get through work, but there was also a consequence there because I would not be able to sleep. So it was using that clonopin to get to sleep. I felt like, you know, Elvis in his last day, sitting here taking my uppers and my downers, like uppers to get going in the morning, and, and it's not funny. I'm not laughing at that. I just feel like it was... Um, I was so trusting of, of the pharmaceutical companies that, you know, or the, or the doctors that were prescribing this stuff that I was just like, okay, like if this is what I need, like this is what's going to help me and I'm, I'm messed up. But later in life, I realized I wasn't messed up. I looked back after the diagnosis of bipolar and stuff. And at the time, my ex-wife was able to help me figure out that it wasn't as a result of who I am. It was a result of since that Zoloft had, had come into my life. So I got off the Zoloft. I got off the, you know, antipsychotic and the mood stabilizer. I stayed on the Adderall because I was still having trouble thinking. And I stayed on the Clonopin because the Clonopin I had tried to go off on a quick wean schedule, which the doctor prescribed, I guess a quick wean of like, I don't know, it was very quick. It was within like a matter of a month or two. He wanted me to get off of this. And I had been on it for a few years at that point. 
and I didn't do well. And I, I think he had just said, well, you're just hooked, I guess. Like, that's just it. Like, I was an addict or something. Like, I am. But, but at the same time, I hadn't come in there looking for something that made me feel good. That I mean, I felt better on the Quantapin in a lot of ways because I was able to do social activities and interact social with social, you know, situations. But at the same time, like, there was a price to pay for that. And I just... The price was was really affecting me, and I didn't realize how much at first. So I kept going with it, and I stayed on that and the Adderall. Eventually, I came off the Adderall, and I I could I was not functioning well at all. I I was <laughs> it was a very difficult time. But I came off the Adderall. What happened was, and this is a very long story, and I'll make it short. You can check out some of my other videos if you'd like to know more about it. But I was damaged by an antibiotic called Leviquin which affected my whole body. It was like caused pain and weakness and all these other symptoms. So I was, I was disabled and I was still on the Adderall and still on the Clonopin. So I decided, well, I'm not writing anymore because I was not able to sit in the chair. I wasn't able to think clear. I had a lot of damage done to my body, which I was bedridden. It's a long story. But so basically I went off the Adderall in time and just because I didn't feel I needed it anymore and it was causing problems on its own. So I was just left with the Clonopin and then eventually because of pain issues, I went over to a pain specialist and was prescribed Oxycontin and took Oxycontin for like a couple of years. And my pain specialist at the time told me that I could go off Kratom safely. And I said, perfect, like here's my chance. And I did it with no problem. I just stopped taking it. I was taking so many Oxycontin that it didn't bother me. Aside from, I noticed when I would run out of the Oxycontin because I would abuse them um, to try to get rid of the pain and for the buzz as well, to be honest. I would notice that I had really bad anxiety. And then eventually in time, I just decided I don't want to be on this roller coaster of taking Oxycontin for a few days and then going off and not feeling well. So I decided to just stop taking the, the Oxycontin and the Oxycodone. And that's when my anxiety was out of control. I would not sleep at night. And this had been two years since I had stopped Clonopin. And I was still suffering some major, major withdrawals, major problems from it. And I believe... Looking back now and just research done, it's because I went off way too fast, way too fast. And just still, it was still carrying on with me. So flash forward from there, I guess, to not that long ago, maybe, well, four years ago. It depends on, on your understanding of time. But to me, it wasn't that long ago. I'm an old man. So um, four years ago, I, I guess it was, I ran out of Clonopin and I remember I started drinking. I'm like, I'm just going to drink through this. I'm going to get through this and not get, not refill my prescription. And I didn't really understand how difficult it can be to get off of and how dangerous at the same time it can be to get off of. So I was drinking and I noticed as days went on that I was off this clock and my anxiety was getting worse. I was having a bunch of weird symptoms and I don't remember a whole bunch because what happened was I started drinking more and more and more just because the symptoms were so bad. And eventually, like on day four or day five after that, of drinking and not taking Clonopin, my girlfriend at the time was here sitting with me in my bedroom and was trying to talk to me. I guess she said I was unresponsive. I had a glazed over look. I was starting to sweat. And she said I stood up and just yelled at the top of my lungs and then collapsed on the ground in a grand mal seizures. And I know now that's a side effect of... of going off clonopin too fast and i know that i'm obviously susceptible to it now <laughs> that that happened but the seizures were bad <clears throat> and they were so bad that you know the paramedics couldn't do anything to stop it i was still going by the time they got here by the time i got to the hospital i was still going in in these seizures which i believe they call like status epilepticus or something where it's continuous seizures i was not stopping and they couldn't figure out what was going on so they placed me to a medically induced coma and I almost died. I almost died for, you know, to think I almost died because of a prescription that my doctor gave me. Like they're, they're there to help save lives. And they gave me something that dangerous. But what I also had happen to me was because of the seizures and they were trying to hold me down. I'm a, I'm a pretty big guy. I'm like six, five. I was fighting them so much that I had what's called rhabdomyolysis. My muscles broke down and had to be processed through my kidney. Like all my muscle fibers broke down through just too much use 
And that in itself is life-threatening, especially with somebody that only has one kidney. Then you add these seizures on top. And then I also had aspirated during the seizures, so I vomited. So they, um, I had pneumonia. I was also, and I was close to death on that. Like, I was on death's door, and, you know, I, I was in a coma for four or five days, I believe, and came out of it, and I remember immediately saying how bad my anxiety was, because I was just on pain meds, I think, at that point. So they started giving me Ativan and started getting it going again. And I felt that relief come on again as they gave me out of Ann until they brought me in my Zola or my Clonopin. I was able to start taking that regularly. The scary thing to me and something that I, I want to point out to people is I, pharmaceuticals are dangerous. They have affected me in a, in a couple of different ways. Like I mentioned earlier, the Leviquin antibiotic and then this as well. And there's been other issues I've had. I had Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which is where your skin will kind of burn off like from a rash. If you're not familiar with that, look that up. I had that from the antibiotic Bactrim. I've had a lot of problems and a lot of issues. One thing I would like to make mention of in this video as well is that I dated a woman for a while that was an ICU nurse, and she said there were three reasons that she saw patients, and they were most pa most people fell under these three reasons, which was either alcohol, cigarettes, or pharmaceuticals, and that really scares me that that's why most people were in that in seeing her close to death. So I was in the ICU, <clears throat> I came out, I got back on Clonopin and spoke to my doctor and, and they just, well, kind of decided that it would be best that I just remain on this because the dangers of, you know, there was death. There was the, the danger of death on the other side of that. So I remained on until recently and kept hearing of people, like I, I help a lot of people with Kratom withdrawal and coming off of that. And a lot of people, it's kind of comorbid because a lot of people that are on Kratom have used benzos in the past because it helps with anxiety and maybe if they're trying to get off, they've used, they've used Kratom, even though that's a whole... Watch other videos before you try that if you're if you're thinking about that. I have other videos on that subject. But people kept mentioning to me how they were getting off benzodiazepines, different ones, and how hard it was, how long it was taking them, etc. Just the... The dangers of it. So I kind of started to look into it. This one really sweet woman wrote me. I have a good friend that wrote me and then another woman that wrote me. And they both, they both had, you know, told me the dangers and basically how to get off of it and gave me some resources. So I watched these resources and started to see, wow, like I have a lot of these, a lot of side effects went from the Leviquin damage, the antibiotic. I'm sorry if I jump around a lot. I tend to do that. I don't go by notes that much. So with the Leviquin, I was damaged really severely. I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of symptoms. And um, about five, six months ago, I was healed miraculously through God by it. I have a video on that, too, if you'd like to watch it. That's another story as well. There's a lot of other stories branching off of this one story. But since being healed, I have wondered how far am I healed because I've had other symptoms like this fight-or-flight response in my body all the time. And I believe these are clonopin. I'm starting to really think... I am healed. This is clonopin that's causing these problems, which is this fight or flight, this inner tremor where I constantly have like this inner feeling of a tremor inside of me and sometimes actually do shake where I have anxiety, where I overreact to the smallest little situation or can't handle stress well. Uh, the mind fog, like I mentioned, being tired all the time, not being able to clearly think, just having trouble I used to be such a good critical thinker. That's part of being a writer too, is to be able to think and analyze situations. And I wasn't, I'm not able to. I haven't been able to well at all lately. And that's why it's hard sometimes to make videos because I don't know, I'm just rambling. Like I don't know half the time what I'm talking about. So, um, you know, there's a bunch of struggles that I am seeing you know, weakness still in my body. And I think a lot of that might be from Kratom, just getting to that tolerance level of where you're taking the pill, but it's not helping you anymore. And then what do you do? Like, do you go up and on the dose? No, that's not a good idea. So you're kind of stuck at this point where eventually your body says, we need that, we need more. We need more to keep this normal situation going on in your life. So looking at that, drawing from inspiration and encouragement from other people I've watched who have made videos on the subject or other people that have told me their personal story has really inspired me to do something about it and to get off of this. And not only to, to try to warn people about the dangers of benzos if they haven't taken them, 
but also to offer support to people that might be thinking about doing the same or are going through the same now. And just document my experiences going through this because it's going to be a, from what I understand, it's going to be very hard. It's going to be a long period of withdrawal after, especially after like 15 years I've been doing it. So I want to document that as a way to help inspire others, to show others that it can be done and just to kind of give them my experience and my take on it because we're all different, but I, I've gained a lot of strength and I've gained a lot of wisdom from hearing other people's stories and how they have overcome this. So that is what I'm getting ready to do. And this video is an introduction to that. It's also going to be day one of my my beginning on this Kratom withdrawal. What's happened recently is I've been taking, because of um, what happened to me with the Leviquin, my pain, I take magnesium. I take a, a bit, a fair bit amount of it. I take about 600 milligrams a day of magnesium. And since doing that, I was originally prescribed two milligrams of clonopin, but since doing that, I've noticed I was so tired that I ended up just naturally going down to one milligram of clonopin daily, about, because I break it in half. There's no score or marking, markings on it or anything, so I'm just kind of guesstimating it's about a half, and I'm taking just a half, so one milligram a day is what I've been able to get down to naturally without withdrawals. I'm pretty comfortable. I still have anxiety, of course, but I'm still pretty comfortable being at that, <clears throat> excuse me, one milligram dose. And that's been through the use of magnesium. So I think there's really something to be said about the power of magnesium and relaxing the body and calming anxiety. If you're not taking magnesium and you have anxiety issues, like, I don't know what you're waiting for. That's, you might be deficient in that mineral. And so what I am doing is I have gotten a scale um, I just got this the other day, thankfully, because I, I make videos on Kratom. Thankfully, so many kind people have donated money to me to help me out because I'm unable to work. I'm disabled still. They donated and I was able to get a scale. So starting last night, what I did was I weighed out to see what my dose is about. And where I'm going to start at right now, I was at about a half a milligram, which weighed, um, I believe a full dose weighed uh, 0.17 on my scale, 0.17 grams. So I'm going to start at 0 0.08 grams, which is a little bit under half of that. It's like just a small cutoff of that. And I think I can handle that well. And my plan is to stay at that for two to four weeks. But I'm going to start this withdrawal, um, this journey, starting today, I guess, with just keeping it maintained at the 0 0.08 and start that. And I'm going to try to keep at that for about two to four weeks. I heard day five, day six can be the hardest. So I want to see how I'm doing because of that half-life. It's going to take a little while for me to fully see where I'm at. So I want to give it ample time so I'm not bumping back up my dose. I just want to stay at a consistent dose of dropping down, dropping down, dropping down until I'm completely off, which will be a long process. But at 0.08 to start, and like I said, I will be giving updates throughout this. I will be sharing new information as I discover new things. I will be sharing information about that. So if you're not current, currently subscribed, please subscribe. Please like and comment on this video. This will help spread awareness and help others as well. But the more likes and comments I get on this video, the more it gets out to people and the more it can help people. Plus your subscriptions always help me too. Um, that's very important. I do earn a little bit of money from that, the uh, YouTube monetization. Not much. Like I've had it going like maybe almost two weeks now and I've gotten $12, so maybe a dollar a day. But um, it is helpful still, and as my channel grows, hopefully it'll pay out more. Also, some people have really helped me out by donating money. I know I'm going to have a lot of struggles going through this, a lot of needs as far as supplements to help me sleep and different things. I know I'm going to be coming up with troubles, problems. I'm going to need different things to help me cope with the anxiety. If you feel so led in your heart to donate to this ministry of me helping others, um, please do so in the links below. And... That will help me immensely to keep this channel going and to keep helping others to reach more people and to also supply my needs that I'm going to need throughout this since I am disabled. And then as I learn these new things and as I discover these new supplements that help me or new things that help me that I'm able to try, I, I will relay them to you as well. So uh, that's where we stand. I'm honestly very, uh, I don't know, I'm excited in some ways, but I'm also getting, I know I'm getting ready for battle. And this is going to be definitely one of the biggest journeys of my life. So guys, that's it for this video. Until next time, God bless.